Hi, Ben, the SAS CFO here with another video tutorial. Today's topic is the SAS magic number. So how do you calculate the SAS magic number? It is simply the current quarter's revenue minus the previous quarter's revenue times four to annualize it, and then dividing by the previous quarter's sales and marketing expense. So for example, if in the second quarter, we had recognized revenue of 50,000, and in the first quarter is 25,000, we subtract those two and annualize by four to get 100,000 and divide by 100,000 of sales and marketing expense in this example, which gives you a SAS magic number of one. So what the heck is the SAS magic number? It's considered a sales and efficiency metric because we are comparing revenue output to sales and marketing spend. So it measures the output of years worth of revenue growth, not bookings, for every dollar spent on sales and marketing. So another way to think about it, it's the cost of new or expansion revenue or new and expansion revenue. So if your magic number is 0.5, it required $1 of sales and marketing spend to achieve 50 cents of annualized revenue gain. So is that good or bad? <clears throat> So in this chart, it shows that a magic number of less than 0.5, you're not ready to invest in sales and marketing. So you should reconsider your sales and marketing spend because it is not efficient based on the revenue that you're acquiring. Less than 0.75, you're getting close, evaluate. And then greater than 0.75, you are gaining revenue in an efficient manner and you should invest more in sales and marketing. So important SAS magic number considerations. It's a measure of recognized revenue, not booking, so don't confuse those. It also implies a payback period. So if your SAS magic number is one, you're paying back the sales and marketing spend in 12 months. If your SAS magic number is 2.0, you're paying back your sales and marketing spend in six months. Another consideration is it does not discriminate between revenue from new customers, so new logo revenue, or existing customers. So your SAS magic number could be great because you have great expansion revenue, but you have poor new logo acquisition. So make sure you understand that it's, it's considering all revenue. <clears throat> Another important topic is it does not consider gross margin. So what the heck? So we're going to get a little technical here. So could you have a magic number of one and still have structural P&L and economic issues? And that the answer is yes, because it tells you nothing about your payback periods. Now, I just said it implies a payback period, but that's not considering gross margin. So if you have poor recurring margins, it could take you a while to pay back your sales and marketing costs, even though it looks like, hey, I'm doing a great job. I've got a great magic number, but your gross margin is poor on your recurring margins. Your payback period could be longer. So that's one key takeaway here with SAS metrics is never look at a SAS metric in isolation. It's always good to pair them up with another one. So in this case, I'd recommend calculating the CAC payback period along with the SAS magic number. So that was a quick video tutorial of the SAS, I'm sorry, the SAS magic number. If you're looking for more resources, check out the SASCFO.com. Thanks a lot.